This is a very interesting case study done by one of her students named Hina Sharma. And uh, she, this is a very interesting uh, problem on music and songs, especially Bollywood music, which is extremely popular amongst Indians. Um, so if you look at this, the problem is very interesting. There is a lot of research on speaker recognition. Right? There is a lot of research on if you give an audio snippet, it will determine who the speaker is. Now, she, Hina wanted to extend this to Bollywood songs. So what she has done here is she has taken up uh, a bunch of Bollywood songs. She has downloaded Bollywood songs from 10 artists that she really likes. Right? She has taken, let's say, 500 solo songs from her 10 favorite artists like Arjit, Atif, Arman, Shreya, uh, Sonu Nigam, etc, etc, etc. Right? So she has taken up all, of, she has downloaded this data, this audio data. And now she is, the task that she is trying to solve is as follows. Right? The task that she is trying to solve is, imagine if I'm given a song, right? Can I predict? She wants to predict the singer. She wants to predict the singer from the song. So given the audio, by song I mean given the audio of the song. Given the audio of the song, she wants to predict who the singer is. Now this is a very interesting experiment because this is an experiment on audio data. And because you have 10 singers, you have 10 solo singers in each of your songs, it's a multi-class classification. Right? It's a multi-class classification problem. Now the first question here is, how do you convert audio into features? Because audio, if you think about it, is time series data, right? And audio has some very, very interesting properties that actually Hina used as part of this uh, case study, right? So she has downloaded all the data and then she converts all of the data, pre-processes all the data, obtains all the data. It took her some time to actually download all these songs and create the data set itself. Then while working with her, we suggest her, her to use something called a spectrograms, right? A spectrogram is, is, like, is like a Fourier transform but oh, but it has multiple uh, okay let me show you an image a spectrogram again she explains what a spectrogram here is and things like that spectrograms are used extensively in audio processing it's 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 one of the one of the trademark things and she learned she learned it it's not very hard when it's because we have covered things like fourier transforms in our course it's not very hard to understand what a spectrogram is and she got some simple code right on how to build spectrograms and this is how a spectrogram looks like right this is, how, this is what a spectrogram looks like. A spectrogram is basically an image representation. In a nutshell, it is an image representation of an audio snippet. Of an audio snippet. So the way it works is this. You have your x-axis, which is time. right? You have your y-axis, which are frequencies. right? So at any, time at any time point, what are all the frequencies that are there? And this color coding happens by amplitude. If you have more amplitude, Right, you have yellow color. If you have less amplitude, you have blue color. Right, this this is this is what is called a spectrogram. And given a short, given a let's say a twenty second audio snippet or something, you can represent it using an image. And this is the corresponding image to the given twenty second audio snippet. Right, and once you have images, we know that we can use convolution neural networks, right? Because CNNs work very well on images. It need not be human images. This is actually a computer generated image of a spectrogram. But still CNNs will work very, very well even on this data. So her, her strategy was given a big audio file, right? Let's break it up into smaller snippets, 20 second snippets each, right? Some 20 second snippets each. On each of these snippets, let's convert this into an image. And given this image, now she can apply convolution neural network, right? And, and we'll, we'll see follow, we'll see how she actually works. She actually uses VGG16 on this data set with, with some, uh, by, by, she doesn't train the whole data set. She only trains, she does transfer learning type of strategies, right? Wherein she extracts some of the features. It's a feature extraction module, right? So we have discussed how to use transfer learning with VGG16 and stuff like that in our course. And she actually took the same idea here. She used the transfer learning scheme to get, to get features from the data. And her overall structure, right, and her overall architecture looks like this. Given a song in .wav format, if you have mp3, you can convert it to .wav. She takes small, small clips or snippets, right? And on each of these snippets, she computes a spectrogram. And from each of these spectrograms, she gets features using a CNN, using VGG16. And she pumps these features into an XGBoost model. 
and then there is there is sort of like a majority vote that happens right because now you're taking multiple clips from the same audio song even if one of them is not sure the others will help you work it out like for example she gives an example of how this works she takes this famous song she takes five snippets here and each of the clips she converts them into uh, into spectrograms for each of them she gets the convolution neural network features and then she applies xgboost on top of them and at the end at the, at the end what what this model gives you is it says okay that there is 80% probability that this song is sung by Kishore Kumar and there is 20% that it's sung by Kumar Sanu right very interesting piece of work right now she again goes into details about uh, what are the results? How did it work? She gives some of the positive results and also some of the negative results. It's important to understand the negative results. For example, there is this song called Leja Mujhe, right? And the original singer is actually Arman, but the predicted singer is Sonu Nigam. But if you look at the probabilities, the probability that it gave Sonu Nigam is 60%. And the second singer is Arman with a 20% with a chance and Arjit with another 20% chance. So the model is not really crazy. It's predicting, even though the original singer is Arman, it got slightly confused that it probably is Sonu Nigam and not Arman. And it also got confused that it could be Arjit. So she here she calls out very clearly some of the some of the mistakes that it made. For example, here in this case, the original singer is Mohit, but the predicted singer is Sonu Nigam. But the probabilities are like Sonu Nigam is 60%, Mohit is 40%, and things like that. It's a very, very interesting case study where she looks at both of them, both these case studies and she looks at uh, how to improve these models in the future, etc. She had very limited hardware resources. So this was a pretty decent start when you don't have like huge computation resources, lots of GPUs and things like that, right? And this blog has garnered 386 likes or claps on Medium. Very interesting feature, right? So this is a very good example where our students, where our students are taking a problem that they're very passionate about. In this case, I believe Hina likes Bollywood songs a lot. And she said, can I predict the singer? Can I predict the singer if you give me an audio snippet? Of course, she didn't know anything. She didn't know anything about uh, spectrograms or anything like that when she got started. We pointed her in the right directions. We said, typically for audio, there's something called a spectrogram, which will give you an image. And on top of image, you can apply CNN. And if you don't have a lot of computational resources, just use VGG16 and get the features and then pump them through an XGBoost model, all of that stuff, right? So we helped, we gave her the pointers here and she ended up reading up about what spectrograms are, learned about what spectrograms are and solved the whole problem on our own. This is what we do for all of our students. We guide them in the right direction. We give them pointers in the right direction to help them solve the problems that they really care about. It's a very, very interesting case study. I really like this case study because Hina took a problem that she's really passionate about, learned additional techniques. We have not discussed, remember, we've not discussed spectrograms in detail in our course, but we discussed about Fourier transforms and going from Fourier transforms to spectrograms is not rocket science. And she took concepts like transfer learning that we discussed in a lot of detail in our course. So even on audio data, we found ways to leverage techniques that we have learned in the course to solve the problem fairly well. So this is a very interesting uh, case study. I'll provide a reference link to her blog um, in the description section of this video.